Alright, it's about the 6.30, quarter 7 in the morning and we're over here at our buddy Mike's. I think I hear him. He just come out the door. There he is. And uh, look who he's got here. He's got a bunch of railroad ties and they're real. They're not uh, the stuff you buy at Home Depot. These are the real McCoys. Sure, they come from the railroad. And uh, how many you got, man? There's a lot of them. Yeah, yeah, there's, uh, there's, there's nine plus these ones here. Eventually, this is going to wrap a whole, around the whole back of the garage. Right. Here. So he's got he's got a big pad he's going to build here, and he's not going to continue this till maybe the summer. But right now, he had to finish this because today's the big day. Right. He's going to go pick up your what? 1950 Cummins Model L. Ay ay ay! And right. it's about half the size of this. How big is this, Mike? Well, the, the the skid, the frame that it's on, is 14 feet long and four and a half feet wide. Uh, it's a power unit engine. It's not a gen set. It's just an engine on a on a frame with a, with a pulley on it. Okay. So, but it's a big thing. It's big, big enough to have to. How much? How much do you think it weighs? Um, probably about fourteen thousand pounds, fifteen thousand. Like fifteen thousand pounds would almost be seven and a half ton. Yeah. Wow. It's a big machine. I'll say. <laughs> so. Uh, it's got a uh, yeah. So I think it's a seven inch. Seven or eight inch bore and a ten inch stroke. So that's All right. A, that's a pretty large engine. So I'm going to film it for him for posterity and uh, probably put it up on the YouTube TV. And uh, I'm going to try not to get in their way. And hope they don't ask me for help. All right. We'll see you over there. All right. Over here, our buddy uh, Bill Dare. And uh, there's the engine back there under the white tarp. And uh, here comes here comes the flatbed. I hear it. I hear it coming. He's taking down a few trees on the way in. Did you notice I had a camera sitting out there? I didn't. Hmm. Well, this one you have to the uh, Old R Model Mac. That's a big rig there. All right. I'll uh, turn this back on when we start loading this thing. Boy, that's big. Right. We just pulled the tarp off and uh, it's 24 degrees out here. Everybody wants to take pictures of it before it leaves. <laughs> I don't think he would uh, like that. Looking right into That's the sun. The All right, sorry for the bad the photographer here, but uh, it's just what we got. It's just what we're dealing with here. Here we go, no sun on this side. That's cold.
Uh, sorry about the sun, but uh, not much I can do about that. All right, they're just going to strap it down now. All right. That was quite the spectacle. It brought all these people out. I want to see this being moved. And they're all going to all going to follow us over mics to watch it get unloaded. So, all right, let's move them out. Ready, buddy? I'm ready. Let's do it. You got to show me a pic uh, thing of that. A video? It'll be on the YouTube TV. <laughs> huh? It'll be on the YouTube TV. Yeah. I'll send you. I'll send you your own copy, though. Okay. Be twenty five dollars though. No problem. <laughs> Mike, maybe you go up here and watch him on that corner. Mike's got his trailer set up over here and he's going to hook it up to that big tree and then use the winch so he can sort of have a little bit of control over this thing. Double the cable up there and uh, put a snatch block on it. There's our buddy Bill, not 82 years old. Look at him, dancing around like a kid.
You got so much weight in the back now. His front end is off the ground, so he, his wheels, his, his uh, steering ain't, ain't gonna work. Pretty 
Bravo. Yeah. yeah, they had to do that because they didn't want to drop that thing from where it was. So they just dropped it, you know, like four or six inches onto that railroad tie and then they had to figure out a way to lift the front up. Maybe it's better off. All right, so that uh, that was pretty successful. That thing's pretty heavy. Like I said, I think Mike said it's maybe 16,000 pounds or something. You know, so uh, it's pretty good. I got something I, uh, I want to show you guys, and maybe maybe some of you uh, gearheads will know what it is. I think it's a, a magneto, and I've never seen anyone like it before. And I, uh, I need some information on it. Let me go in. Let me go in the garage here. All right, I got a. Uh, a magneto here off a, a Cushman Cub and uh, I don't have any information on it at all and everybody I talk to never seen anything like it you know we don't know uh, who makes it or uh, or anything you know so uh, anybody has any any kind of information on this thing uh, uh, let me know because I think it might have one bad coil on there and uh, you might have to rewind that but uh, it's an interesting setup here with the, okay, so you're, you're, you're back and forth with that the lever points and, and everything, that, the small and the, the, whole, the whole motor assembly. The magnet carriage. up here. Yeah, okay. Real interesting. Like I said, I've never seen anything like this, and neither has Mike or uh, anybody we know. So, anybody have any information on this kind of magneto? Uh, just leave it in the comments. <laughs> Alright, thanks. I want to turn around. Sure, we'll that's take that's it back. Oops. We almost broke it there. Yeah, here's a look at the back of it. There's no name on it, no numbers, no nothing. So, like I say, it's off a two horse uh, Cushman Cub. Alright, thanks. Alright, crowd's died down. It's just me and Mike, and I uh, have a better chance now of talking to Mike and, and looking this thing over. And uh, a lot of you guys probably wondering what this big hunk of wood is in front. And uh, Mike is going to take it. He's unbolting it. He's going to drop it. We're going to take a look at the front of it. Yeah. Good radiator protector, that's for sure. He's going to say. Probably going to be the biggest radiator. What, radiator or radiator, Mike? Oh, man. Don't even start. All right, no, don't get me started. I'm going to get more comments. All right, you ready? All right, let's see, let's see what it looks like, buddy. Ay ay ay! Wow! <laughs> I'd put that board back up there as soon as possible. <laughs> Cummins diesel power, buddy. Look at that. No messing around. All right. So everybody's gonna want to know what's uh, what are the plans here? Well, the long-term plans is to get it running, put a generator on the back of it, and start my own engine show, my huh. own engine museum. Huh. 
but what's going on with the back here anyway? It just has a pulley, right? No well, generator, yeah. no nothing. So the the story on this is um, it originally ran large water pumps uh, in the cranberry bogs uh, hmm. down in around Salem and all that. Um, Let me go around here. I've been I've been fighting this sun all day, Mike. <laughs> Every everywhere I go, we're down down to Bill's house. I was looking right in there. All right, come on over here and talk. The, the amazing thing is that uh, through a couple contacts and some good good people at Cummins, um, I was able to get the build sheet for, for this engine, which gives me the all the specs that it dynoed at when it was built. I know where it was shipped. It was actually shipped to Cummins in Philadelphia. I know from there it went down to Maryland, and it was only down in Maryland for a short time. And then I have some original correspondence typed letters uh, from about 1955 when it was sold or purchased by a guy in South Jersey from Maryland and then it was shipped up to South Jersey where it, uh, it served its life for pumping water. So I mean, it did that for probably 30 years. Yeah, 50, 60, 70, 80, about to the, to the 80s or so. Then it sat dormant. And then about, what was it, 18 or 20 years ago, it was purchased and hauled over to, or purchased by the guy that I got it from. And uh, they they worked on it intermittently to try to get it running. Uh, it got some water in the fuel system. It damaged a few components in the pump. Uh, and they were never able to get it running. So it hasn't run in at least, oh, probably 20 or so, 25 years. No. No, no, probably more, probably more like 35 years since right. the last time it was run. And so. Bill, when Bill had it, they tried to get it running, and he said that uh, one of the gears froze up and well, with right. water so and broke. It seems uh, like what may have happened was from sitting outside, water might have got down this tachometer drive, this right. is tach drive shaft, mm -hmm. down to the pump here. So water may have gotten into this pump and frozen. And there's a gear in that pump. Seems like it might have broken and they had another one made. But after it was reassembled, they could never get it to fire. They could get it to pump fuel and the thing would puff white smoke, but they could never get it to light it off. Hmm. So. so it's all there and it's all ready to go. It just has to be cleaned up and right, we gotta identify, figure out what was wrong. we got to identify what type of fuel pump that is, whether it's a single disc or a twin disc fuel pump. I think it's a single disc pump. Um, go through all the injectors, take them apart, clean them, make sure that pump's undamaged. Uh, the thing turns, it's got decent oil in it. You know, we'll take the inspection plates off and everything, obviously. The governor's gonna have to be gone through, you know, I don't, I, I want, I don't wanna pull the heads off if I don't have to. But make sure, you know, pull, pull the rocker covers and the valve covers off, inspect all that. Um, So another another thing, cool thing is uh, this is air start. Oh yeah, look, I was just, it's funny. I was just looking at that, and you yeah. mentioned that. Yep. Huh. So on the back here, you got it's just it's got a Chicago fitting and a little like a whistle valve, pretty much. And then there's a, an air distributor off the back here. So I don't know if you have to rotate this engine to a particular point before you start it, or if because it's got a distributor running to each cylinder if you can just do it at, at any position. Hmm. Will... I was just going to ask you that because I see the holes and I know they yeah, they usually bring that around to whatever. And you have, there's, I mean the flywheel's got all the marks on it for when you time it, but I don't know if it mm -hmm. has to be at a certain position to start it, if it has a start position. So, all right. we, we do have the manual for it, all the paperwork, so, yeah. Figure it out. So, uh, it, it, you're not going to work on it for a while, are you? No, no. Okay. I mean, I, I want to get the roof a roof built over it and everything like that first. Mm. So that's and right. Plus, we got to get the caterpillar done this one. Right, right. It's not like you have a lack of work. <laughs> yeah. Mike spent about two months. I don't know how, how many ton of stone did you ever wind up putting in here, Mike? Um. Well, what's here and what over and what's here and what's over there is about fifty ton. Fifty ton. And I'm probably gonna need another forty ton to do around the back. Right. Of the shop there. 50 ton of stone Mike had delivered here and he, he moved it all himself, put his railroad ties in and he was also going to uh, continue this on 
and going around the back of the shed here or the, the building for more engines so uh, he's been busy all summer long and that's it so that's the story you guys ain't gonna see this run for a while but uh, it's gonna run and uh, when it does I'm sure Michael take videos of it himself so uh, that's where we're at I hope you uh, enjoyed it what do you say Mike enough of this this. All right, Mike's Mike's too busy. He wants he wants to dig into this a little bit and just see what the, what's going on with it. All right, we'll see you guys in the next one. See you later.